While the gas laws predict the properties of gases, temperature, pressure, etc., kinetic molecular theory explains the gas laws. We are not going to go into kinetic molecular theory in great detail, but you will do this in advanced chemistry and physics courses. By defining the mass and diameter of gas molecules, we can calculate their energy and their velocity and the frequency of their collisions. Note that the kinetic molecular theory treats all collisions as elastic. There are no conversion between kinetic and potential energy, and there are no reactive collisions. This section focuses on the results from kinetic molecular theory. Because molecules are moving, they have kinetic energy. This energy is a function of temperature. At zero Kelvin, there is zero available energy, and molecules have zero kinetic energy. You don't need to memorize these numbers, but at 298 Kelvin, molecules have around three kilojoules per mole of kinetic energy. We will so soon see these numbers presented again graphically. While the average energy is around 3 kilojoules per mole at 298 Kelvin, the distribution is large and called the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution. The Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution is the energy distribution of molecules as a function of temperature. The numbers on the previous page are shown here on a Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution. E star is the energy with the greatest probability, the top of the curve. ERMS is the midpoint of the distribution, the area under the distribution before and after the EMS line are equal. Note that this distribution ranges from 0 to 20 kilojoules per mole, with both E star and ERMS around 3 kilojoules per mole. This figure presents the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution as a function of temperature. The profile from the previous slide was only at 298 Kelvin. With increasing temperature, the maximum increases and the profile spreads out over a larger energy range. With decreasing temperature, the maximum decreases and the profile condenses. At absolute zero, all molecules have zero kinetic energy. Chemical kinetics is the study of the rates of chemical reactions. We will discuss kinetics in greater detail in Chem 102. I just want to touch on the relationship between kinetics and the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution. Activation energies range from 50 to 150 kilojoules per mole. That energy comes from the collision between molecules. Looking at these profiles, it is obvious that on average, molecules have greater kinetic energy at higher temperatures. If the activation energy was 50 kilojoules per mole, that two colliding molecules must have a total of 50 kilojoules per mole or more in energy. This is more probable at higher temperatures, which explains why reactions proceed faster with increasing temperature. Realize that reactions with activation energies around 50 kilojoules per mole are fast, such as combustion and explosions. Reactions with higher activation energies occur much slower because there are fewer, mo fewer molecules with sufficient temperature. So the energy velocity relationship is the kinetic energy equation. And we have E is equal to 1 half mv squared. Given this relationship, if two molecules have the same energy, which has a higher velocity, the heavier or the lighter molecule? Then, 
This is the velocity distribution of different molecules at 298 Kelvin. They all have the same energy distribution because they are at the same temperature, but have different velocity distributions because of their different masses. It is evident that lighter molecules have a higher velocity than heavier molecules. There is an interesting non-scientific demonstration of this. We normally breathe air with a molecular mass of around 29 grams per mole. Helium has a molecular mass of four grams per mole, and SF6, sulfur hexafluoride, has a molecular mass of 146 grams per mole. I promise to show you something really cool as long as you promise not to try it at home, okay? Okay. Now, everyone wants to know why my voice sounds higher when I inhale helium. Now, simple fact is, is that helium is six times less dense than air, which means sound waves travel through it much faster, which makes my voice sound much higher. Now, the same effect can be achieved in reverse if I inhale something like sulfur hexafluoride, which is six times denser than air. I inhale some of that, and my voice gets really low, although somehow I'm still funny. It's scientific! <laughs> I must mention that all the videos I have looked at, and I've looked at several, say that helium is six times less dense than air and that SF6 is six times more dense than air. This is not true. It is easy to show that helium is over seven times less dense and SF6 is five times more dense. I also need to warn you about inhaling SF6. Helium is less dense than air, so after inhaling helium, it naturally leaves your lungs. SF6 is more dense than air, so after inhaling SF6, it settles in your lungs and displaces oxygen in air from your lungs. None of the videos warn people about this, but people have passed out after inhaling SF6. Passing out is actually a good thing because you hit the floor and your nose and mouth are now at the same level as your lungs, allowing the SF6 to leave. Temperature is one measure of the available kinetic energy. I mentioned that we would see some numbers again. The RMS energy is a function of temperature and readily calculated as shown. Pressure results from collisions of molecules with the walls. Increasing the number of gaseous molecules increases the collision frequency and the pressure. Increasing the gas temperature increases both the collision frequency and collision energy, which also increases the pressure. Now we are gonna look at some examples that involve the kinetic molecular theory of gases. So the RMS energy equation is given by E is equal to three halves RT. And we're setting that equal to the kinetic energy equation, which is one half MV squared. Here we're using M as the molecular mass. Because R is the molar gas constant. The twos clearly cancel out. And we're left with the equation This equation can be arranged to give us V squared is equal to 3RT over M, or simplified to the velocity is equal to the square root of 3RT over M.
The second example requires us to determine the RMS speed of sulfur hexafluoride, nitrogen gas, and helium at 298 Kelvin. So the equation we are using is V is equal to and we're simply substituting in the values that we have. For nitrogen gas, this is equal to three R T and for nitrogen gas, the molecular mass is 28 grams per mole. Moles cancels, Kelvin cancels. And in order to cancel the joules and grams, we have to realize that joules is kilogram meter squared per second squared. So by multiplying and converting the denominator to kilograms, the units in the equation become kilogram meter squared per kilogram second squared, all square rooted, kilograms cancel, and we're left with meters per second. Plugging the numbers into a calculator, we find that the velocity of nitrogen is 515 meters per second. And that is the RMS velocity. I'll leave solving for helium and SF6 as an exercise for you. But when you do, you'll find that the velocity for helium is 1363 meters per second. And for SF6, the velocity is 226 meters per second, these being the RMS velocities.